Okay, next is the classification of distribution system. Okay, so the part of power system which distributes electric power for local use is known as distribution system. So, in general, the distribution system is the electrical system between the substation fed by the transmission system and also the consumer's meter. So, between of the um, transmission system and also consumer's meter, we consider as the distribution system. Okay. So, distribution system uh, generally consists of feeders. We have feeders, distributors and also service mains. Okay, so you can see here in this figure, so this figure shows the single line diagram of a typical low tension distribution system. So we have here feeders, we have the, this one we call the distributors and this one is the service means. Okay, we, we go one by one. The first one is the feeders. Okay, so feeders is a conductor which connects the substation. This one as is the substation or localized generating station to the area where power is to be distributed. So, from the substation to the distributors, we have the feeder. Okay. So, generally, no tapings are taken from the feeder. So, that current in it remains the same throughout. So, you can see here, from the substation to the distributors, there is no tapping at the feeders, right? So, uh, the current is not, uh, uh, the current is remain constant. Okay, so the main consideration in the design of a feeder is the current carrying capacity. Okay, the second one is the distributor. So a distributor is a conductor from which tappings are taken for supply to the consumers. So in this figure, we can see here AB, for example, AB and then BC, CD and DA. So, this one we call as the distributors, okay? So, you can see here, uh, this one, okay, this one, we call as the distributors, okay? Uh, means that we have here is AB, and then uh, BC, and then uh, CD, and then uh, AD. Okay, so this is all the distributors. Okay, so the current through a distributor is not constant. Okay, because of what is not constant? Because you can see here, there's a tapping here. Okay, so uh, tappings are taken at various places along its line. So while designing a distributor, voltage drop. Okay, voltage drop, we have to consider the uh, voltage drop. Along its length is the main consideration since the statutory limit of voltage variation is uh, normally we know plus minus with 6% for the voltage uh, of the rated value at the consumer's terminal. Okay. The third one is the service main. Okay, this one you can see here we have the service means. Uh, service means. So, a service mains is generally a small cable which connects the distributors to the consumer terminal. So, we can see here from CD, okay, we have CD, this one is the distributors. We connect to the loads by the service mains. Okay. Okay, next is the classification of distribution systems. So, a distribution system may be classified according to uh, the first one is the nature, nature of the current. Uh, second is the type of construction. And third is the scheme of connection. So we look on to one by one. First is the nature of current. Uh, according to nature of current, uh, distribution system may be classified as we have two types. First is the DC, AC, DC distribution system and AC distribution system. So nowadays, uh, AC system is universally adopted for distribution of electric power uh, because it is more simple and more economical than uh, the DC uh, distribution system. Okay, the second one is the type of construction. So according to type of construction, distribution system may be classified as 
we have A, the underground, the overhead system, and B is the underground system. So, um, the overhead system is uh, generally employed for the distribution system uh, as it is 5 to 10 times cheaper than the equivalent underground system. In general, the underground system is used at places where overhead construction is impracticable or prohibited by the local laws. Okay? And then the third one is the scheme of connection. So, according to the scheme of connection, the distribution system may be classified as we have the radial uh, system, ring system, and also the interconnected system. And each of these uh, systems has its own uh, advantages and, the, and disadvantages. Okay. So, we look at um, the figure here. Okay. So, we have the first one is the primary distribution system, 11 kV, 6.6 kV. And the second one, okay, this one is the first one, this one the second one, is the secondary distribution system, 400 and 230 volt, okay? So, um, if you look at onto this uh, figure, the first figure, so it shows a typical uh, primary distribution system. So, the electric power from the generating station, Okay, uh, is transmitted at high voltage to the substation located in or near the city. At this substation, voltage is stepped down to the uh, 11 kV with the help of the step down transformers. You can see here from 33 to 11 kV, okay, with the help of the step down transformer. Okay, and then power is supplied to various substations for distributions or to big consumers at this voltage. You can see the transfer the electricity to the big consumers, um, to the substation for distribution and etc. So this forms a high voltage distribution or we call as the primary distribution system. Okay, this one is the primary. The second one is the secondary distribution system. It is the part of AC distribution system which includes the range of voltages at which the ultimate consumer utilities the electrical energy delivered to him. So the secondary distribution employs uh, about 400, okay, 400 to 230 volt, okay, three phase, four wire system. Okay, this one. Okay. So, uh, this figure, you can see here, this figure shows a typical secondary distribution system. The primary distribution circuit delivers powers to various substations called distribution substations. The substations are situated near the consumer's localities and contain step-down transformer. You can see here, there are step-down transformer. Okay, at each distribution substation, the voltage is stepped down uh, to 400 volts and power is delivered by three-phase, four-wire AC system. Okay, this one is the three-phase, three-wire. You can see here is three-phase, four-wire system. Okay, from 11 kV to 400 volts. Uh, so, the voltage between any two phases in is 400 volts. So, you can see here, this one. Okay. You can see here, this one. Oh, sorry. Okay. So, um, basically, um, this is V line to line. Okay. Is 400 volts. Okay. So, you call voltage between any two phases. And then the second one, you can see here, this one, is uh, the voltage between uh, any phase and neutral, we call as the uh, phase voltage. V phase is 230 volts. Okay. So, the single phase domestic loads are connected uh, between any one phase and the neutral. So, you can see here, this one, the house, eh? the residential house, you can see. It use only the V phase 230 volt, which is the single phase. Okay, and then uh, whereas you can see here this one, um, 
the three phase 400 volt motor loads are connected across three phase lines directly. So it used the, you can see from this figure, it used three phase. So for the factory, use three phase and the residential house use single phase, which is 230 volts. Okay. Okay, then um, we look on to the scheme of connection. So, all distribution of electrical energy is done by constant voltage system. So, in practice, the following distribution circuits are generally used. Uh, the first one is the radial system. Okay, we have the radial system and then we have the ring main system. And finally, we have the interconnected system. Okay, we go one by one. First is the radar system. Okay, so uh, in this system, separate feeders radiate from a single substation and fed and feed the distributors at one and only. So you can see here from this diagram. Eh? Okay, so you can see this one. We have two types. Eh? Um, uh, system which is the DC, this one is for the DC, okay, this one is the DC, and then this one is the AC, distribution, substation. Um, okay, so from this, um, we can see first is the, this figure, okay, for the, for this figure. So, fig, uh, this figure shows a single line diagram of a radial system for DC, distribution system. Where a feeder OC, okay, this one is the feeder OC, supplies a distributor AB at point A. Okay, so we can see here we have the point A. So this one is uh, the distributor AB. Okay, obviously the distributor is fed at one end only. So in this one, the point, uh, in this case is point A. Okay, the next one is the uh, figure 2 shows a single line diagram of a radial system for AC, AC distribution. The radial system is employed only when power is generated at low voltage and the substation is located at the center of the load. Okay, uh, this one the substation is located at the center of the load. Uh, this way. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is the simplest distribution circuit, uh, and has the lowest initial cost. However, it suffer uh, suffers from the following drawbacks. Okay. So the disadvantages of this um system. The first one is the end of the distributor nearest to the feeding point will be heavily loaded. Okay. Uh, so you can see here. So this one, this part, uh, the end of the distributor nearest of uh, to the feeding point will be uh, this one eh? uh, will be heavily loaded. And then the consumers are dependent on single feeder and single distributor. So we have the single feeder and also the single distributor. Therefore, any fault on the feeder or distributor cuts off supply to the consumers who are on the side of the fault away from the substation. And then the third one is the consumers at the distant end of the distributors would be subjected to serious voltage fluctuations when the load on the distributor changes. Um, yeah, this one, eh? which is the, uh, the distant end of the distributors. Okay. Okay, this is the explanation on the radar system. Okay, and then uh, due to these limitations, this system is used for short distances only. Okay, and then next is the ring main system. So in this system, the primaries of distribution transformers form a loop. You can see here, there's a loop. Uh, the loop circuit starts from the distribution bus bar. Okay, this one. 
makes a loop through the area to be served and returns to the substation. Uh, this one is all the loops. Okay, this one is all the loops. So this figure shows the single line diagram of ring main system for AC distribution where substation supplies the closed feeder L, M, and O, P, Q, R, S. The distributors are tapped from different points. We have M, O, Q of the feeder through distribution transformer. Okay, this one is the distributor. This is all the distributors. Uh, the remain system has the following advantages. First, there are less voltage fluctuations at consumers' terminals. And the second one is the system is very reliable as each of these distributors is fed their two feeders. Okay, so we have two feeders. Uh, then section SLM, okay, SLM of the feeder can be isolated for repairs. This one, SLM can be isolated for repairs. And at the same time, continuity of supply is maintained to the all consumers via the feeder S. Okay, if this one is cut off, for example, we, we do some uh, maintenance for this line, but still uh, the consumer can get the electricity supply from S, R, Q, P, and N. N. Okay, so that is the advantages of the remain system. Okay, next, the scheme of connection is the interconnected system. So, when the feeder ring is energized by two or more than two generating stations or substations, it is called interconnected system. Okay, this is the figure of the interconnected system. So, this figure shows the single di line diagram of interconnected system uh, where the closed feeder ring Okay, this one we call closed feeder ring A, B, C, D. Okay, this one is closed feeder ring. Okay, the closed feeder ring A, B, C, D is supplied by two substations. So, this one we have two substations. Okay, uh, this one is the first substation. Okay, substation 1 and also this one is substation 2. Okay, so we have two substations supplied to the closed feeder ring A, B, C, D. Okay, um, so this substation is connected at point D and also point C uh, respectively. Okay. And then distributors are connected to points. So the distributor are connected at point O. Okay, this one is the distributors P, Q, and also R. So this is all the we call as a distributors. Okay. The interconnected system has the following advantages. First one, it increases the service reliability. And second one, any area fed from one generating station during peak load hours can be fed from the other generating station. So this will reduce the reserve power capacity and increases efficiency of the system. So this is the about all the scheme of connection for the distribution system. Okay. So next is the design considerations in distribution system. So uh, good voltage regulation of a distribution network is probably the most important factor responsible for delivering good service to the customers. For this purpose, uh, design of feeders and also distributors requires uh, careful consideration. Okay, the first one is the feeders. So, a feeder is designed from the point of view of its current carrying capacity, while the voltage drop consideration is relatively unimportant. So, uh, because of why? Because uh, voltage drop 
in a feeder can be compensated by means of voltage regulating equipment at the substation. So, it focus more on the current carrying capacity. The second one is the distributors. A distributor is designed from the point of view of the voltage drop in it. It is because a distributor supplies power uh, to the consumers. And there is a statutory limit of voltage variations at the consumer's terminals, which is plus minus, okay, uh, the voltage drop, which is plus minus 6% uh, of the rated value. So the size and the length of the distributor should be such that uh, voltage at the consumer's terminals is within the permissible uh, limits, okay. So, feeders is focus more on the current while distributors focus more on the voltage. Okay. Okay. Uh, next, 3.9, underground and overhead system. So, the distribution system can be overhead or underground system. Okay. Overhead lines are generally mounted on wooden, concrete or steel poles which are arranged to carry distribution transformers in addition to the conductors. Okay, while for the underground uh, systems, uh, normally it used conduits, cables and manholes under the surface of the street and also sidewalks. Okay, so we go for uh, overhead uh, system first. So the transmission and distribution of electrical power using overhead lines over long distance okay and then uh, the appropriate spacing between the conductors is provided which prevent an electric discharge okay prevent an electric discharge to occur between the conductors must have a appropriate spacing between the conductors and then overhead lines uh, are subjected to the faults okay this is the, the advantages of the overhead system where um, it is subjected to the faults that, uh, that occur due to lightning and short circuits. It is easy to repair uh, compared to underground system. However, difficult to find exact point of fault as transmission lines are very long. Okay? And then the insulation must be provided between the conductors and also supporting structure and we stand both the normal operating voltage and surge due to switching and lightning. Okay, uh, for the underground system, so underground transmission lines uh, or distribution are mostly used to supply urban substation in high load density areas. Okay, for the high load density areas, for example, you can see at the Putrajaya, right? Okay, all the conductors must be insulated from each other. Uh, the voltage level used in underground system is below than 66 kV due to the difficulties in designing the appropriate isolation for higher voltage levels. And um, the drawbacks of this underground uh, lines, it is more expensive due to underground cables must be insulated, installed in the pipe, Cool with oil circulation system and difficulty in access to repair. Okay. Uh, so, but this uh, underground have the following advantages. So, this is the figure. Okay. The figure of the underground cables. So, the advantages of these underground cables, it ensures uninterrupted continuity of supply. The possible supply interruptions due to lightning. Uh, storm or weather are eliminated due to underground cables. And also, uh, it requires less maintenance. And then the accidents caused due to breakage of overhead lines conductors are eliminated. The life of underground cables is uh, much more longer. The voltage drop in the underg uh, underground cable is less. The visual impact can be minimized and also more appropriate to use in populated areas due to safety issues in overhead lines. However, the disadvantages of the underground cables are the only drawbacks of these underground cables are 
the extremely high initial cost and also insulation problems at very high voltage. And the use of underground cables is mainly for distribution of an electrical power at low and medium voltage. Okay. okay this is uh, the advantages of the overhead lines. Okay, uh, long distance transmission is possible by the overhead lines. It can be used for the long distance transmission. And then the conductor in overhead line is less expensive. And then the size of the conductor for the overhead lines is much more smaller compared to the underground cables uh, due to good heat dissipation. And then the cost of insulation uh, is less due to using the air as the insulator between the conductors and the gas or oil is not required okay compared to the underground cable and the cost to erect the tower is less okay than laying the underground cable which is very difficult and very complicated okay that's all for chapter three elements of transmission and also the system system so after this, we will we continue with chapter uh, 4. With that, I thank you. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.